from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Global Partner Network. Hi, welcome to theCUBE virtual and our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 with special coverage of APN Partner Experience. I'm John Furrier, your host. We are theCUBE virtual. We can't be there in person, we're there remote. And our two next guests are, we have Pure Storage, Michael Sotnik, VP of in Worldwide Alliance's Pure Storage, and Rob Charnecki, Principal Product Manager for AWS Outposts. Welcome to theCUBE. Wonderful to be here. Great to see you and, and thanks for having us. Michael, great to see you at Pure. You guys had some great uh, momentum, earnings, and some announcements. You guys have some new news. We're here at reInvent, all part of AWS and Outpost. So I want to get into it right away. Uh, talk about the relationship with AWS. I know you guys have some hot news, just on, came out in late November. We're here in the event. All the talk is about new higher level services, hybrid edge. What are you guys doing? What's the story? Yeah, it, look, I, I, I got to tell you, the partnership with AWS is a very high profile and strategic partnership for pure storage. Now, we've worked hard with our cloud block store for AWS, which is an extensibility solution for Pure's flash array in, into AWS. But I think the big news and, and one of the things that we're most proud of, you know, is, is the recent establishment of Pure being service ready and outpost ready and the first and only on-prem storage solution. And we're shoulder to shoulder with AWS as AWS takes outposts into the data center. Now they're, they're going after key workloads that we're well known for, and we're very excited to, to partner with AWS in that regard. You know, congratulations to Pure. We've been following you guys from the beginning, since inception, since there was founded startup, and now obviously growing public company uh, on the next level kind of growth plan. You guys were early on all this stuff with, with, with Flash, with software in cloud, so it's paying off. Rob, I want to get to Outpost because this was probably the most controversial announcements I've ever covered at reInvent over the past eight years. It really was the first sign that Andy was saying, you know what, we're working backwards from the customers and they all are talking hybrid, we're going to have Outpost. Give us the update, what kind of workloads and verticals are seeing success with Outpost now that that's part of the portfolio? How does it all work out? Give us the update on the workloads and the verticals. Absolutely, although I have to say, I'd call it more exciting than controversial. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're so excited about the opportunities that Outposts open for our customers. And you know, customers have been asking us for years, how can we bring AWS services to our data centers? And, and we thought about it for a long time. And it, until, until we define the Outpost service, we really did, thought we could do better. And, and what Outpost does is it, it lets us take those services that customers are familiar with, it lets us bring it to their data center. And, and one of the, the really bright spots over the past year has just been how many different industries and seg market segments have, have shown interest in Outpost, right? You could have customers, for example, with data residency needs, those that have to do local data processing, uh, maybe have latency needs on a specific workload that needs to run near their end users, or, or just folks trying to modernize their data center. And, and that's a journey that, that uh, transformation takes time, right? So, so Outpost works for all of those customers. And one of the things that's really become clear to us is that to enable the success that we think Outpost can have, we need to meet customers where they are. And, and one of the, the fantastic things about the Outpost Ready program is many of those customers are, are using Pure and they have Pure hardware. And it, you know we, we sent an Outpost over to the, the Pure lab recently. And I have to tell you a picture of those two racks next to each other looks really good. <laughs> you know, it's funny just to kind of walk back my controversial comment. You know, it, I meant in the sense of that's when cloud really got big into the enterprise and you had to deal with hybrid. So I do think it's exciting because the edge is a big theme here. Can you just share real quick before I get into some of the pure questions on this edge piece with the hybrid? Because what, what's the customer need? And when you talk to customers, I know you guys you know, really kind of work backwards from the customer. What are their needs? What causes them to look at Outpost as part of their hybrid? What's the key consideration? Yeah, so, so there are a couple of different needs, John, right? One, for example, is uh, we, have, we have regions and local zones across the globe. Uh, but we're not everywhere. And, and their, their uh, data residency regulations that, that are becoming increasingly common and popular. So customers might come to us and say, look, I really need to run, for example, a financial services workload that needs to be in Thailand. And we don't have a region or local zone in Thailand, but we can get them an outpost uh, to, to places where they need to be, right? So, 
the that, that requirement to keep data, whether it's by regulation or by a, a contractual agreement, that's a that's a big driver. The other piece is there's there's a tremendous amount of interest in the that top down executive sponsorship from across enterprise customers to transform their operations, right? To modernize their their digital approach, but that they're when they actually look at look at their estate, they, they do see an awful lot of hardware. And, and that's a hard challenge to, to plan the migration. When you can bring an outpost right into that data center, it really makes it much easier because AWS is right there. There could be a monolithic architecture that it doesn't lend well to having part of the workload running in the region, part of the workload running uh, in their data center. But with an outpost, they can extend AWS to their data center. And, and that just makes it so much easier for them to get started on their digital transformation. Michael, this is this is the key trend you guys saw early cloud operations on premise. And it becomes cloudified at that point when you have DevOps on, on premises and then cloud, pure cloud for bursting all that stuff. And now you got the edge exploding as well of growth and opportunity. What causes the customer to get the pure option on outputs? What's the what's the angle for you guys? Obviously storage, you got data and I can see this whole, you know, where there's no region and certainly outpost stores data and that's a requirement for a lot of, you know, certainly global customers and needs. What's the pure angle on this? Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and, and appreciate Rob's comments around what AWS sees in the wild in terms of Pure's footprint in the market share that we've established as company over 11 years in business and you know over eight years of shipping product. You know, what I, what I would tell you is um, one of the things that, that a lot of people miss is the, the simplicity and the consistency that are characteristically, you know, very much in the AWS experience mm -hmm. and equally within the Pure experience. And that, that's really powerful. So as we were successful in putting Pure into workloads that, you know, for, for all the reasons that Rob talked about, right? Data gravity, you know, the, the regulatory issues, you know, just application architecture and its inability to move to the public cloud. Um, you know, our predictability, our simplicity, our consistency really match what the customer was getting with other workloads that they had in AWS. And so with AWS Outposts, that's really bringing to the customer that single pane of glass to manage their entire environment. And so we saw that, we made the three-year investment in Outpost, as Rob said, just having our solution in Pure's data center. It's um, set up and running today with the solution built on FlashBlade, which is our unstructured data solution, and you know, delivering fantastic performance results in AI and ML workloads. We see the same opportunity within backup and disaster recovery workloads and into analytics. And then equally the opportunity to build, you know, flash ray and, and our other storage solutions and, uh, and, to, and to build, you know, architectures with outposts in our data center and bring them to market. Real quick, just to follow up on that, what use cases are you, you seeing that are most successful with outposts and in general, in general, how do you guys get your customers to integrate with the rest of uh, their environments? Because you, you know, everyone's got now this operating environment, it's not just cloud public, it's cloud on premise and everything else. So Yeah, what? you know what's cool is, and then Rob hit right on it, is the, the wide range of industries and the wide range of use cases and workloads that are finding themselves attracted to the Outpost offering. Um, and so, you know, I, without a doubt, there's going to be um, you know, I think what people would immediately believe, right? AI and ML workloads and the importance of having high performance storage and to have a high performance outpost environment, you know, as close to the center as possible of those solutions. But it doesn't stop there. You know, traditional, you know, virtualized database workloads that are, for reasons of application architecture aren't candidates to move AWS's public cloud offering. Um, are a great fit for outposts. And those are workloads that we've always traditionally been successful with in the market and see a great opportunity to, you know, build on that success as an outpost partner. Rob, I got to ask you last reInvent when we were in person, when we had real life back then, um, <laughs> I was at the replay party and hanging out and this guy comes out to me. I didn't even know who he was. Obviously big time engineer over there. Opens his hand up and shows me this little processor. And I'm like, he closes it and he's like, and I go, I take a picture and everyone's like freaking out, don't take a picture. It was the, uh, it was the big processor, it was the big um, uh, kind of Perna, I think it was the big monster. And it was just so small. See the innovation in hardware, you guys have done a lot there. 
Um, so that's cool. I'd like, like to get your thoughts on where the future is going there because you got great hardware innovation, but you got the higher level services with containers. I know you guys took your time. Containers are super important because that's going to deal with that. So how do you look at that? You got the innovation on the hardware, check, containers, how does that all fit in? Because you guys have been making a lot of investments in the, some of these cloud native projects. What's your position on that? You know, it, it's all part of one common story, John, right? Customers, they, they want an easy path to, to delivering impact for their business, right? And, you know, you've heard us speak a lot over the past few years about how we're really seeing these two different types of customers. We have those customers that, that really love to get those foundational core building blocks and stitch them together in a creative way. But then you have more and more customers that they want to they want to operate at a different level. And, and, and that's okay, we want to support both of them. We want to give both of them all the tools that they need to, to spend their time and, and put their resources towards what differentiates their business and just be able to give them support at whatever level they need on the infrastructure side. And you know, it's, it's fantastic that our combination of investments in hardware and services, and now with Outposts, we can bring those investments even closer to the customer. If you really think about it that way, the, the possibilities become limitless. Yeah, it's, I like the simplicity aspect of it. It's, it's pretty beautiful too, the way it looks, it looks nice. Uh, Michael, I got to ask you on your side, a couple of big announcements over the, we've been following from Pure. Looking back, you obviously had the Pure as a service announcement. You bought the Portworks was acquisition. You know, that's container management across the data center, including Outposts. You got Pure as a service. Is Pure as a service working with Outposts and how, and if so, how, and what's the consumption model for customers there? Yeah, thanks so much, John, and, and appreciate you following us the way that you do. It's 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 meaningful and appreciated. Listen, you know, I think the customers have made it clear and AWS has, you know, kind of led the way in terms of the consumption and, and experience expectations that customers have. It's got to be consumable, they've got to pay for what they use, and it's got to be outcome oriented. And, and we're doing that with Pure as a Service. And so uh, I think we saw that early and have invested in Pure as a Service um, for our customers. And you know, we look at the way we acquired Outposts as a customer and a partner of AWS. Um, and that is exactly the same way customers can consume Pure. You know, all of our solutions in a, you know, use what you need, pay for what you use, um, environment and you know one of the exciting things about our AWS partnership is it's wide ranging and one of the things that AWS has done I think world class is marketplace and so we're excited um, to share with this audience you know really on the back of just recent announcement that pure as a service is available within the AWS marketplace and so you think about the you know simplicity and the consistency that pure and AWS deliver to the market AWS customers demand that and they get that in the marketplace and, and we're proud to have our offerings there. And um, Portworks has been in the marketplace and, uh, and will continue to be showcased from a container management standpoint. So as those workloads increasingly become, you know, the, the cloud native, you know, DevOps um, containerized workloads, uh, we've got a solution end to end to support that. Great job, great insight. Congratulations to Pure. Um... Good moves, Jazz making some good moves. Rob, I want to just get you the final word here on Outpost. Again, great, we, everyone loves this product. Again, it's a lot of attention. It's really that the, puts the, the operating model of cloud firmly on the, in the on-premise world for Amazon. Uh, opens up a lot of good conversations and business opportunities and technical integrations are, are uh, um, all around you. So what's your message to the ecosystem out there for Outposts? How do I, what's the, what's the word? I want to, do I work with you guys? How do I get involved? What are some of the opportunities? What's your position? How do you talk to the ecosystem? Yeah, you know, John, I think the, the best way to frame it is we're just getting started. We're, we've got our first year in the books. We've seen so many promising signals from customers, had so many interesting conversations that, that just weren't possible without outposts. And, uh, you know, working with partners like Pure and expanding our outposts ready, program is, is just the beginning, right? We launched back in September. We've, we've seen an, another meaningful set of partners come out uh, here at reInvent, and we're going to continue to, to double down on both the Outpost business, but specifically on, on working with our partners. I think that the, the key to unlocking the magic of Outpost is meeting customers where they are, and those customers are using our partners, and there's no reason that it shouldn't just work when they move their, their partner-based workload 
from their existing infrastructure right over to the outpost. All right, I'll leave it there. Michael Sotnik, VP of Worldwide Alliances at Pure Storage. Congratulations on the great innovation strategy. It's easy to do alliances when you've got a great product and technology. So congratulations, Rob Karnecki, Principal Product Manager of Outpost. We'll be speaking more to you throughout the next couple of weeks here at reInvent Virtual. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Cube Virtual, we are the Cube Virtual. We wish we could be there in person this year, but it's a virtual event over three weeks. We'll be lots of coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.